Would you stand, please? I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Those who believe in me, though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We meet in the name of Jesus Christ, who died and was raised to the glory of God the Father. Grace and mercy be with you all. We have come here today to remember before God our dear sister Dot, to give thanks for her life, to commend her to God, our merciful Redeemer and Judge, to commit her body to be cremated and to comfort one another in our grief. Let us pray. Almighty God, you judge us with infinite mercy and justice and love everything you have made. In your mercy, turn the darkness of death into the dawn of new life and the sorrow of parting into the joy of heaven through our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you sit down, please? The first of our readings is from St Paul's letter, first letter to the Thessalonians in which he likens death to a sleep. Now, sleep is something that we all experience, and we know we wake up from it. 
St. Paul is assuring us that when we fall asleep in death, we may awake to everlasting life. We would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope, For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, shall not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. And the second lesson is from the Holy Gospel according to St John. And they are some words of Jesus. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one cometh unto the Father, but by me. The opening words of our service today, the sentences I used as we came up the central aisle, they encapsulate the faith that brings us here today. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Jesus Christ came to give us life, and to give us life in all its fullness. This is the promise to us. This is the promise to Dot. That is the very heart of our faith. And it is in that faith that Dot lived her very long life. She was an example, an inspiration, an encouragement. And and though our church family has been diminished by her passing, it has been greatly enriched by her presence with us for so long. So today, as we gather for this service, we don't just remember a death, but we celebrate life itself. We celebrate the eternal life, symbolised by the Easter candle, which reminds us that the darkness of death has been overcome by the bright light of Jesus Christ's resurrection. And we give thanks and remember all that Dot was to so many people, and we celebrate her life and her achievements and her faith. But first of all, we come together as family and friends and colleagues to say goodbye. And this is the best way of all that we can say, God be with you, Dot. 
because we say it from the bottom of our hearts and as solemnly as we can. And we say it with love, God's love, Christ's love, and our love. For it is within that love that Dot has journeyed over the years and did her very best to give love and friendship to others. So with tears of joy mingled with our tears of sorrow, we commend love to a greater love. And we take comfort from the words of Jesus, which we just heard read from the Gospel of St John. Let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. A special place in everlasting bliss has been prepared by God for all who follow him. And with the aid of our love and our prayers, we may know that Dot occupies her place. Dot was born in Dorset in August 1920, 100 years ago. I really thought she was indestructible. She was educated at a Roman Catholic convent school in Dorchester. And she met her husband Peter when she was a guide and he was a scout. The two groups met at the same time, but the scouts finished just before the guides so that the boys could hang about outside and meet the girls. That's how Dot and her husband met. They fell in love. They decided to get married. But there was a snag. Dot lived in the wrong part of town and Peter's parents disapproved. So the couple, who by now had both joined the army, eloped. Not as far as Scotland, but to Paul. And they got married there. And they were blessed with three children, Christine, Mike and Vivian. And later the family grew and, and grew and grew. Now there's nine grandchildren, 15 great-grandchildren and two great-great-grandchildren. After the war, family spent some time in Germany, then three years in Egypt and two years in Hong Kong. After that, they moved to an army base in Colchester, Essex, where Dot worked in the post room of GEC. The family moved to Clevedon in 1984, but sadly, Peter died in 1987. But Dot was an amazingly talented woman and she acquired many skills, music, calligraphy, glass engraving, cross stitch, embroidery, photography, lace making, hairdressing, painting, even something called pyrography, which I had to look up after Mike told me that's what she did. In Clevedon, Dot became a cherished part of this church of St John. She sang alto in our choir and she had a very important role in hospitality, serving coffee after the Friday Mass and taking her turn serving after the Sunday Parish Mass. She was also a member of Clevedon Choir and Clevedon Ladies Choir, and she helped found the Southern Clevedon Women's Institute 30 years ago. She had so many friends that for her hundredth birthday, which was held in the open air because of the present restrictions, we were all given our own time slots. We had to go and celebrate in the open. We had to do it in shifts. It was a long day for Dot, but she loved it, though I think the next day she felt it a bit. And she loved especially when the Women's Institute gathered round and sang Jerusalem. There are so many memories, so much for which we should give thanks. So today, sorrow, yes, 
but also deep gratitude for Dot, who was God's gift to us. So God be with you, Dot. And God be with us too. You journey away from us, this we know. But we can trust that in travelling with Christ, we shall never lose you, and we shall never forget your smile, and we shall always know who you are with. And now Christine will pay her tribute to her mum and share some of her memories. take this off otherwise my eyes glasses missed up and I can't read mum and I spent a lot of time in her latter years talking of her childhood and I would like to share some of her early life mum was born in a different era almost unrecognizable today a time between two world wars her parents had been in service her mother a housekeeper and father the head gardener at a large country house in Dorchester, just down the lane from Max Gate, where Thomas Hardy lived, and where her mother often helped out when the Hardys were entertaining. Her father was a self but well-educated man who had at one time been a butler in a large London establishment before finally return, retiring to the country, where he married late in life and was over 60 when his only child was born. He passed on to his beloved daughter his love of reading, his love of gardening, and his inquiring mind. The world she grew up in was still very class conscious, and she would have been expected to go into service herself, though she had other ideas in that respect. When she was quite small, five or six years old, the owners of the big house at Zywood, who spent half their year in Egypt and half at home, recognized some spark in the child particularly her love of music and reading. So when they were away, they asked her to play their grand piano every day, to keep it in use, telling her to play every key at least once every day. They also gave her free range of the library, which gave her access to books which, as she once told me with a grin on her face, were sometimes of a very adult nature. She was paid for taking care of the piano with a small sum of money, which went directly to the Catholic school to help pay for her education. Mum liked the school, but not the fact that the nuns would strap her left hand behind her back and force her to use her right hand only, an agony for any naturally left-handed person, which of course doesn't happen today. She realized that she was being trained in the attributes that a lady's maid would need when she was apprenticed to a hairdresser a job that was to stand her in good stead in, said in later years, but one that she heartily disliked, as much as she disliked the thought of being anybody's lady's maid. One of the joys of her life at that time was her music. She took a Saturday job at the local music shop in Dorchester, which sold mostly musical instruments and street, I beg your pardon, sheet music. Her job was to sit at the piano in the shop and play directly from the newly arrived music sheets to attract customers. Her other great joy was in cycling all over Dorset and beyond with a group of friends who happened to include this very good looking boy called Peter. And she died, decided very on, early on that he was the one for her. War was looming when mum and dad joined up and they decided to get married and elope. They married on the 31st of December, 1939, a date chosen by mum as 1940 was a leap year, and she was not going to be accused of having done the proposing. <laughs> the war years followed. Mum followed Dad to the Firth and Forth in Scotland, where he was part of the coastal defences protecting vital shipping lanes. My brother and I were both born there, only coming back to Dorchester when Dad was sent to reconnect with the British Army, pushing its arduous way through Europe. After the war, Dad stayed in the army and Mum joined him in Germany, and Mum took to army life with great enthusiasm. Hunting deer, hare and pheasant in the Black Forest to supplement the tiny meat ration, travelling all over the country perched on the back of Dad's motorcycle, playing the latest dance music on her piano accordion at various mess functions, 
and having her third child, my sister Vivian. She loved the traveling as they moved from Germany to Egypt, from there back to the UK, then on to Hong Kong, eventually, as been said, settling down in Colchester when dad left the army. At that time, she was just mum to me and remained so through the years until eventually, when both she and I were single ladies and I came to live with her here in Colchester, I'm oh, sorry, got muddled up, Cleveland. <laughs> I do know where I am. Um, it was then that I came to know her as a very good and close friend. We were both very keen on our crafts, some of which we shared, including embroidery, painting, cross-stitch and lace making, which we'd both been doing for some time, not knowing that the other was also doing it. Many of you in church here today will, I know, have fond memories of the beautiful embroidered cards she used to make, mostly left at the back of the church there to sell for church funds and many of them personalized for particular occasions, anniversary, wedding, etc. Mum threw herself passionately into whatever came her way, and when she joined the WI, she encouraged the formation of Southern, D Southern Cleveland WI, and in 2018 was awarded the Avon Federation Chairman's Rose Bowl, nominated for, I quote, her service to Southern Cleveland WI, a founder member 32, year 32 years ago, a committee member for 27 years, many as president, she was still serving as registrar in her 99th year, a very wise, much respected, and very much loved linchpin of our WI, unquote. WI members will remember her most, I think, for her enthusiasm for and running quizzes. All who knew her in later life will remember she kept her wits about her to her end, never giving in, never giving up always up to date on current affairs and happy to discuss the politics of the day. Her end was pretty much as she wanted. But as she said on the note that she left regarding her funeral, please play from Borjak's New World Symphony, Going Home. I shall be going home to Peter. It's a great sadness that given Dot's musical ability and her singing in the choir in this church that we can't sing today, we're not allowed to because of the uh, pandemic regulations. But we can sing in our hearts and we can play the words through in our minds as we listen to the King of Love, my shepherd is.
You can shed tears that she is gone, or you can smile because she lived. You can close your eyes and pray that she'll come back, or you can open your eyes and see all that she had left. Your heart can be empty because you can't see her, but you can be full of love that you've all shared. You can turn your back on tomorrow and live yesterday. Or you can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. You can remember her and only that she's gone. Or you can cherish her memory and let it live on. You can cry and close your mind. Be empty and turn your back. Or you can do what she would want you to do. Smile, open your eyes, love a lot, and go on. And now let us pray. And in a moment of silence, we hold Dot in our hearts. We bring our own memories to God, our own thanksgivings. Remember all that she meant and all that she still means. We give thanks for her great contribution to life and the way she made life for all who knew her that much better. God of mercy, Lord of life, you have made us in your image to reflect your truth and light. We give you thanks for Dorothy Edith, our friend Dot, for the grace and mercy she received from you for all that was good in her life and for all those memories that we treasure today. Lord, you promised eternal life to those who believe. Remember for good this your servant, as we also remember her and give her back to you. Bring all who rest in Christ into the fullness of your kingdom where sins have been forgiven and death is no more. Your mighty power brings joy out of grief and life out of death. Look in mercy on all who mourn, especially we pray for all the members of the family, especially those who are abroad and were unable to be with us today. Give them patient faith in times of darkness. Strengthen them with the knowledge of your love. You are tender towards your children and your mercy is over all your works. Heal the memories of any hurt and failure. Give us the wisdom and grace to use aright the time that is left to us here on earth, to turn to Christ and to follow in his steps in the way that leads to everlasting life. God of mercy, entrusting into your hands all that you have made and rejoicing in our communion with all your faithful people, we make our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Saviour, who taught us how to pray. And so we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Earlier we sprinkled the coffin with holy water, which reminds us of God's baptism into Christ. And we sensed her, and we sense her again. And the rising smoke symbolises the presence of Almighty God, in whose presence she is for eternity. Would you stand, please? Let us commend Dorothy Edith to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. God, our Creator and Redeemer, by your power, Christ conquered death and entered into glory. Confident of his victory, and claiming his promises, we entrust Dorothy Edith to your mercy in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, who died and is alive and reigns with you now and forever. Amen. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.
Thanks, Derek.